you, you, you've worked in the magazine publishing industry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was it that, and when in that process was it that you decided to open up a facility yourself? Uh, we had moved back to Canada from the United States. Uh, my wife and I and our family had moved there for a period of about nine years. And I was researching, I wanted to explore the max contraction concept more. And that was going to be my next book. So in order to test uh, the hypothesis, I needed equipment that would allow me to train a muscle in its fully contracted position. And immediately Nautilus came to mind because of their cams and you know, the fact that they're, uh, you know, part of their bragging rights were that they provided full range resistance, including the most important uh, position of full muscular contraction. So I started to buy Nautilus machines. Some guys collect cars, I was buying machines, and eventually I had 60 of them, too many. Uh, for my garage, too, and so they went into the neighbor's garage, and then there was too many for there, and they went into a storage locker. And over time, it kind of dawned on me that wouldn't it be nice to have them accessible, you know, under one roof? So I went out and inquired as to what it would cost to lease a facility, and in this town it was quite expensive. So I thought, ooh, so much for just having a big home gym where we're actually going to have to open it up to the public, and maybe they would like to train on, you know, really good. Uh, resistance training equipment. And so that was you know, how we created Nautilus North. Um, hadn't planned on it being a personal training center. I, I planned on it being like some of the old Nautilus centers where you would go in, somebody would put you through one workout, you know, show you how to set the seats, you would get your own workout thing and away you'd go. And with maybe somebody such as myself at a front desk to answer questions. But it wasn't the way it played out. People wanted to be trained. They had better workouts when they had a trainer with them. And they, you know, they didn't want to bother with setting the seat positions or the weights. And so it just evolved over time so that now I think since we opened in 2004, uh, we have supervised an excess of 80,000 one-on-one workouts. So when you do that, even if you're not looking for it, you know, data is coming at you and you can see what works and what doesn't work. And, um, and I mean, we're still open, which means we must be doing something right because people are continuing to renew their memberships and come. So, uh, and I think part of what we're doing right is we don't overtrain people. You know, we're we're really about providing what they need, uh, and not not caving into the fitness trends that people have. I remember when we opened, we had a, a lady that owns a, a fitness center about 30 miles from here, and it's a nice fitness center, but she booked an appointment. To come in and train. And I thought, well, that's odd. Why would a competitor want to come here and be put through a workout when they have their own facility and presumably know what they're doing? Um, so anyway, she came in with a friend and um, I asked her, I said, you know, well, you know, I'm happy to train you, but why? And she said, well, we like to know what the latest fads are so mm. that we can use them in our gym. And so we were interested in the once a week concept. And I thought, well, number one, this isn't a fad, so I don't think you're going to, you know, find much here that is going to be, unless you believe in it and you know what you're, you're doing, you can't just offer a once a week workout to somebody because, you know, if you do a low energy output workout once a week, it's not going to do a hell of a lot, you know, so anyway, it's been a, an evolution and a learning process every step of the way.